Hey, Lennox, how are you? Hey, doing well. How are you? I'm well. Where are you? I'm in Astoria, Oregon, so I'm at the North Coast. Ooh, you know there's an Astoria here in Queens? I did know that, yes. So we're <laughs> opp <laughs> opposite ends. <laughs> nice. So listen, I really wanted to connect with you because you have had a really interesting journey. And I think a lot of artists kind of think, oh, if only I can get into commercial work, everything would be cool, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I feel like you've done some interesting stuff. Can you tell us a little bit about what the heck you do? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I'm a graphic designer, art director by day. Um, so I am working in a commercial space, an advertising and marketing space. Um, and it is unique to me because outside of that, I'm a collage artist. So I get to bring that artist mindset, especially in the collage aesthetic, to my commercial work. That's amazing. Before we go into the business aspect of it, how did you get into collaging? Oh, oh there we is are. Is that me? Who knows? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, did you hear can you hear me now? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. How before we go into the whole business aspect, how um how did you start collaging? Well, um it was just a natural kind of thing I gravitated towards. I was never a drawer. I was never introduced to arts um, traditionally. Um, my parents, you know, were creative in their own way, but not in a traditional sense. Um, so it was just about that ability to like treasure hunt and mm. to p produce and put things together that really drove me um, to pick up and stick with collage. Wow. So before you went into commercial, you were an artist, correct? Yeah. I mean, just for fun, you know, yeah. I was, you know, I was doing nothing with my life. You know? <laughs> like, honestly, like, you know, I was um, partying too much, drinking way too much, hanging out with the wrong people um, and not using my time, not using my time wisely. So, um, yeah, then I, I went to school and kind of got my stuff together. And what would what, what cause that impetus, I'm wondering? Like, was there a moment that's like, yeah. hmm? Definitely. Um, you know, I was having a lot of um, family challenges, like, in, in the house. And I was, like, in my early 20s. And um, I just wasn't going anywhere, you know. And um, I have a drive, but I didn't have the support. Um, so I kind of just took it upon myself to be like, I'm moving out of the state and going to school. Bye. Yeah, wow. That's really interesting because I, I think, I mean, especially right now, but even a few years prior, it's like, yeah, a lot of young people have the drive and there's all this um, empowerment through technology and accessibility to things, but there's something in the air that's heavy that kind of weighs down on people and like how do we get ourselves out of this right like to, to actually create something um what yeah. art practices or what practices in general got you there mm, um well you know like i like i said i was just like futzing around really with yeah. just cut and paste and just i mean the internet um you know seeing what's out there and um, I always had a creative drive, like I knew I was creative, but I was scared of using my creativity for business um, because of the whole like on demand. Um, I didn't know if I could keep up with that and really tap into that creativity every day on a moment's notice. And how did you um, do? I, just, uh, I mean, fear is always fear, right? And then ah. you overcome it and it's not a big deal anymore. Isn't that such a great piece of advice? Yeah, fear is always fear, and it'll always be there to, to some extent, right? Yeah. Especially when money is involved, I would think. When you work with these, with, with different brands, and are, do you always feel you have to reinvent yourself, or do you just go to the core of you? I go to the core of me, um, and I think that's what attracts other people and other businesses to me, because I stick to my unique point of view. Um, and obviously I'm flexible because it's not about me right. at the end. Right. It's about the product or the company, the client. Um, but being able to know like what your strengths are and what you're good at and what people think are cool from you, that's what you need to focus on. That's brilliant. I always say, you know, when you start 
as an artist and you go anywhere, if you become an artist and real estate agent or an artist and go into advertising, you're so much stronger because you know yourself or you're more of yourself, right? Yeah. That's, that's yeah. amazing. What have been some of your uh, exciting projects that you've worked on? Oh, um, you know, I think some of the most exciting projects I worked on have been in the social media space, um, but also um, with Adidas. I, they approached me for um, a t-shirt line um, and that was a really big deal for me. Um, so I'd say being approached as an American yeah. artist by Adidas um, was an honor and really super uplifting and encouraging to my confidence of my artistic ability. Um, and in the social space, just being able to work on a, a wide range of clients through my um, agency jobs. So Diet Coke was a huge client um, a huge project that I was able to work on and create very collage specific designs that they had never do and wow. had never done. So being able to push the envelope and um, have the client see value in creativity and an artwork online was a really big step. That's amazing. And I know I just asked you like, you know, you, you, you work from your core and what's exactly what's in your core, what moves you and, and inspires you when you create your collages? Well, I would say my personal emotions, like definitely um, just my brain, um, my interests, um, and they're super simple as far as, you know, I love food, I love animals. <laughs> I mean, really as like mundane as that, uh, as a starting point. I love but Also, that. it's really about the, the materials. Mm. Um, for me, the materials are really what like drive and guide me and my artwork and to get thinking. That's amazing. And I love that it translates, right? Because I think something that keeps a lot of artists away from working commercially is the idea of like, oh, I would have to give up so much of myself or I'd have to listen to exactly what they demand of you. And it kind of creates a really weird framework. How do you approach that? Well, you know what? Having a sandbox to work in is most of the time easier than not. Um, you have the guardrails from the client being yeah. like, hey, this is the end result, like not the end result, but this is the end product. You know, it's, it's a social post. It's a, it's a t-shirt, it's a poster design. So then you're able to really hone your decision making and, um, just have more thoughtful, um, decisions basically, um, with that. And it does seem like, Oh, I'm going to be stifled, but in reality, it, it makes you be a better creative problem solver because you're like, how do I work within myself still, but also meet this like creative brief. I love that. And I love that you said you, f I love how you framed it, right? It's a sandbox. You're having fun and there are guardrails that will guide you. Right. Yeah. I yeah, saw, it, yeah. go for it. Yeah, yeah. I saw that you recently worked on a really fun, um, uh, campaign that was inspired by the tarot. Yes. Yeah. For Jane West, uh, shout out Jane West. <laughs> She's an awesome client. Um, so, you know, she, but has her full trust in me, which is great. And I get to just kind of take the ball and run with it. Um, I know, you know, the general vibe and, and her likes and dislikes and, um, you know, being working, managing her social media and engaging with the community. I can see, you know, the fans interest and in what they're, oh, what wow. they're, you know, interacting with and really um, engaging with on their social feeds. So being able to dive into the fan and really put myself as like a super fan of Jane West or whoever the client is, um, you know, really helps those creative decisions. So noticing that um, her fans are like very into a very like whole, a wellness, you know, more of a spiritual wellness um, um, kind of a community, you know, crystals and tarot and horoscope and, you know, um, and just taking that as the starting point, like as you would with, your own personal artwork, you know, that nugget of the start of inspiration to what you're going to build that piece off of. So I just took it and ran with it. Once again, the materials are what really guided the, that project. Um, I found, you know, old scans of like mythical beasts and that kind of just started me into the kind of tarot horoscope um, vibe. That's so beautiful. There's so much to pull from when it comes to the tarot. Do you read tarot? I actually just started um, only a couple of weeks ago. Amazing. Um, what deck do you so, have? 
I just I have the the original like the the, the writer Smith. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's amazing. So uh, be warned, as soon as you buy one deck, your house will like automatically like just have, you'll find like a deck that you bought you didn't realize under a pillow. Um, I'm about to buy like a cat tarot deck. It's just the cutest oh, thing. So but uh, but yeah, there, it, it's such a beautiful resource for inspiration and just, you know, lessons. I'm, that's what I'm really finding and what I'm really excited about right now as far as, um, once again, like being inspired by the visuals of it, you know, right. there's so much to pull from that. And just like you said, the different styles and artwork within the decks themselves are super inspiring and cool to just even flip through and look at. Um, and I've been pairing it with journaling, which yes. um, I'm not very great at as far as, um, you know, like having <laughs> my past like therapist tell me I need to journal more. Yeah. Um, but I never felt it was great I, like I just it wasn't my thing but finding tarot and like being able to put like this collection because I'm a very collector person which oh here collage. you go yeah here you go with the text so it'll, then it'll feel like home <laughs> yes so yes I'm very I'm very excited and feeling very like eager and energized learning and just learning about tarot but also myself that's amazing what would be like an ideal project for you <sighs> oh man um I would think, I think having a whole fashion campaign branded with my illustrations. Oh, amazing. Yeah. W more like what? Streetwear, couture? Yeah. Yeah, definitely streetwear. Um, I've been inspired by Japanese fashion since I was in fifth grade. I have been obsessed and um, enthralled with everything and the way they take historical references to a T, but also make it their own while also being respe respectful of, um, you know, what they're pulling, what era or, you know, culture they're pulling it from. Um, and just the way, once again, it's the mix and match. Mixing and matching is all about me, whether it's artwork, fashion, like interior design, I I'm love eclectic. That. I love yeah. that. Yeah, it all kind of feeds each other, right? Yes. One thing that's also really struck me about you is I reached out and I asked you a question and you were so forthcoming with information, which, you know, sometimes people are very uh, secretive, right? Especially when it comes to business. And I had an experience uh, where I reached out to an artist who was, who had his work at Starbucks, which is like, you know, my holy grail or which is something I want to do. Uh, I'm sure you do and everybody else does too. Um, and he was like, well, you know, it kind of just landed on me. I don't have to try. It just happens. And I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> you know, I asked for, I asked a question. I got an answer. Um, right. But, but it felt like, okay, there's probably much more to it. But I asked you the same question, right? Like, how, how does this happen? And you gave me so much amazing information. Um, and one of your tips was to really think about where you want your, your artwork to end up, right? Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Definitely. So, What's like being going through design school and having graphic design? <laughs> we froze a little bit. You Oops, sorry. That mind we, oh, we, okay. we froze a little bit. So uh, oh, no. I, I asked the question, and then right when you were going to answer, it died. Okay. <laughs> so you can take um, it from there. <laughs> no worries. So, um, having the design, my design mindset, I. I always am thinking about the bigger picture and the end result. Like, what is the end product here? So thinking about that, like, hey, I want to have my artwork on Starbucks cups or on their wall murals or on their gift cards. Um, tailor what you want to do to the end result that you want. Build a portfolio that's personal projects, but of what you want to do. And then that just even builds more trust in you with the client, potential, future, dream client saying like, hey, I've already thought about this. I've already tried this um, and this is what I can do. And imagine if I actually had your resources to make this happen, what I could even produce then. I love that. And I love the sense of joy in your voice when you're talking about this because it really feels like, right, this is exactly what we want to do as artists, what we want to do as designers. <laughs> you know, I, I just love that. Sorry. Could you hear yeah, me? It broke yeah. out a little bit. <laughs> it broke out a little bit. Sorry, I'm super rural. I'm in a rural county. No worries. Yeah, tell me about that. So you okay? So this is really cool because you have done a campaign for Adidas. You're working on different campaigns. 
but you do not live in New York City, you're not in San Francisco, you're not in Chicago. How does that work out? That's so awesome. Well, I've done, I lived in Portland. I went to school in Portland, Oregon. Um, lived in Hollywood, California. Uh, lived in Austin, Texas. And now I'm out here in the coast of Oregon. Um, and I'm able to do that because I work remote. And I have worked remote since living in LA. Um, I've just been fortunate enough that I found an amazing company, an ag amazing agency there. Um, that that was their ethos. I mean, they were like, do your best work at home, like be in your space. So I've, I've been fortunate enough to like keep that and carry it. Not that I've had jobs in between where I had to go to the office. Um, but yeah, being freelance, full-time freelance now, I mean, online clients only. What do you think that does to you as a creative? Oh, opens things up. I mean, you're not stifled at the office. You're not thinking about office politics or who's doing what or who's watching over your shoulder. Um, you know, you can still take care of your life and still take care of work at the same time. Um, so really having that work life balance is insanely important, especially to a creative person. You have to be in a good mindset to produce great creative work. And when that it, when your mindset is happy and positive and you like what you're working on, that gives your client, your job, an emotional creative edge over a different company because their artists, their creatives are having a blast. Isn't that wild? That's so true. And unfortunately, I feel like many people didn't really realize that until post COVID, you know, when they were forced to stay home and they're like, oh, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, Which is also kind of annoying. You're yeah. like, this is what it took. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I really hope moving forward we can learn our lesson. But also, you get to be in rural spaces. You get to be with nature. And... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm right by um, the Columbia River that then meets up with the Pacific Ocean. Ah. Um, so, like, from my window, I can see the, the Columbia River. Um, it's, it's, you know, it really changes your mindset. And I think putting... I've moved a lot as well. So always getting out of my comfort zone every mm. few years also really boosts my creativity and my point of view. Yeah, I totally see that. Now, usually artists think of going to big cities just because of the community and the network one forms. How do you connect with other artists and other designers um, when you're working remotely? Online, yeah, yeah. Slack, Instagram, email. Um, Working at the agency remote, even though we were mostly all in Los Angeles, we all talked over Slack. Like, that that was it. And it felt the same. But then when you actually saw someone in person, it felt like such a more special, yeah. bigger deal. Um, so, yeah, just staying connected online. I mean, growing up it, as a kid in, you know, on, in the late 90s with the Internet, um, you know, chat rooms. I mean, it was cool to connect with just randos, but <laughs> I it's love almost it. in that same sense yeah. now. Like, we get to just like bop online and just send a quick hey or checking in or cool work um, and keep it trucking. Yeah, that's amazing. That's so true. And it's people are so accessible on Instagram now, right? It's like, it is really like you're a network. Um, yeah. Let me ask you about your LA experience. What was LA like for you? Wasn't my vibe. Um, it, too many, too many people, too big. Um, I couldn't stand having to drive 20 minutes to the grocery store. You know, that's just a few blocks down the road. Um, it just wasn't my vibe, you know, and that's fine. Um, I, once again, I, I pulled inspiration and I got a fresh perspective on, um, just living there and what it's like. Um, you know, we live right by Griffith Park. So, you know, while we could go up there with the dog and, and hang out, it just, um, it was too big. I'm more of a, a small town, quaint, quirky kind of person. Nice. Yeah. LA is huge and you can't get around <laughs> without a car. I'm from LA originally. Um, okay, there you go. but yeah, but yeah, how, how fun to be around, uh, the observatory if you live by Griffith Park, right? Where Rebel Without a Cause was filmed and all this history. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we were right on like, um, <laughs> Right on Hollywood there and Western. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's wild. <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, it was a good experience. Um, just wasn't my style, and that's, that's fine. My husband had lived in L.A. for 14 years. Um, 
prior to him moving to Portland and us meeting and then eventually going back down there and traveling. Um, but you know, it just didn't fit us. Where would you guys go next? (sighs) Well, from, from here right now, we want to buy a house. So we're looking to settle down, have a piece of property, have a big shop on the property. My husband's a sculptor, so he wants space to build. So What's that like? We'll stay in Oregon. <laughs> I love that. What's that like being married to another artist? Oh, well, <laughs> I would say he's my first like partner that has been like a very true like artist and a very true like creative person. Um, so honestly, I owe like a lot of things to him. Um, he he found me and he found me. I mean, we met when uh, I was in a dark place and mm. I wasn't doing well mentally and with my once again, I was, I was in the space of not doing anything for myself. Um, and meeting him, he really, really pushes me to this day. Um, and doesn't, doesn't tell, doesn't tell me what I want to hear about my Mm. artwork or my design. He tells me the honest truth as a fellow creative, as a fellow artist. Um, and that really helps shape kind of my direction with, um, my artwork. Not that I, it starts with, from within me, obviously, but just having that background person that you trust opinion, even when you don't want to hear it. I um, love that. I love that because, you know, especially when you go to art school, you're so pushed on this idea of being unique and nothing matters, but your opinion and your vision. Um, Mm -hmm. I've been married to my husband for 19 years and I, I wouldn't be able to do what, anything, right? Because without that kind of support and just that input, like you're saying. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really important. And, and just, you know, even on a friendship level, like having someone to not not just tell you yes and everything's great and yeah. be like, hey, like, here's some a piece of constructive criticism. And I mean, that only helps you grow as an artist and an individual at the end of the day, so. Yeah, I love that, I love that. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Now, if someone like me, approaches you cold blank Mm -hmm. hey how do I get to what you're doing what would you say is a road that leads towards that being in the commercial space as an artist as a creative right well um a few things that you can do um one I would say like we talked about before like what's your goal or goals what's the kind of end result that you're looking to get out of this is it um, for a nine to five job? Is it for commissions and just freelance project, right. one-off projects? Um, so thinking about what road you want to take with that, um, and then really, um, making decisions that fit with that end goal. So if you want to be a commission based, say for example, Starbucks, you want to do a, a wall mural at Starbucks. Well, think about what your style is and how that would translate to a wall mural for Starbucks. Um, as far as production, you know, like what would it take? Um, and really starting to make new bodies of work that fit that, um, to have a distinct style. Now it doesn't have to be unique, but it's good to have your own thread in there and that it can be replicated as well. Um, so thinking about end, end goal end products, what's your style, what's your unique illustration or artwork that you're bringing to the space um building work around that that's just personal projects but that you can put together and really send out and show people um and then right the style clients want to trust you and trust what they're going to get at the end of the day um i would say personally for me i have a different style when it comes to digital work and physical fine artwork um and that's because of the materials and the way you know you have to create so thinking about those steps um once you kind of have that going and then start looking up agencies companies products brands people at those at those businesses and researching about them finding their emails at their work and sending emails introducing yourself and your work here's my links here's like a three pieces of um, you know, work as a sample to look at. And it's super thankless task. <laughs> you get no responses for the most part. But, you know, it, it helps. Yeah. And, I, and again, I go back to your tone when you're talking about creating this. It's exciting. I can hear it in your voice. And it gets me really excited. And when you're 
you know, when you're doing projects, that's the kind of emotion you want to feel, right? So you're doing it yeah. because you love it. And then if you can get a job out of it, then yeah, this is, this is, then you're on to it, you know? Absolutely. You're so exactly. right. Exactly. And you also recommended to, uh, Behance. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. 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 Um, and look, I recommend it and I'm, I, I don't, uh, mine's not updated. So like, don't <laughs> take what I'm saying, but don't t follow my actions. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but look, that's how the Adi that's how Adidas found me. No um, way. So Germany headquarters that that's who reached out to me. So I'd say the great thing about Behance, it does have more of like an international audience. Um, I get a lot of um, not a lot. Once again, I'm not active on there, but the few like engagement. We're back. So yeah, a lot of people don't live. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, um, so most people don't live on the U.S. So that's, it's great to just have a bigger audience. That's a amazing. Different audience. That's than amazing. Who's on Instagram? Yeah, that's amazing. Um, so to close, other than the tarot, yeah. other than um, the work that you're doing right now, what's moving you? What's inspiring you? What are you reading? What are you listening to? What are you watching? <laughs> Mm. Well, I have, I, I watch all things, um, RuPaul's Drag Race. So any spinoff shows. <laughs> I know it's um, such, <clears throat> it's overtaken like my house. My husband's obsessed. I pretend not to like it. And yeah, it, it's out of control. I must it's, say. It's great. Once again, visually, like yes. anything that's like creative that they, it's, it's fashion, it, it's acting, it's, it's creating, it's, it's, it's entertainment, it's comedy. Like it takes so many creative, um, facets in the show that I love it. I mean, and just seeing, you know, people just do what they feel is fun and good is great. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's a little mean spirit. I'm super sensitive and I'm like, Oh, I can put it on mute and just be like, wow, mesmerized by everything. Um, the other day I was at a thrift shop and I found a RuPaul paper doll book. Like they're literal Whoa. cutouts and you can like play with the You need to eBay that. Right? I'm like I am like I can't I can never collage this, I can never rip this up, I can never use it. It's just so cool. Um uh, that's amazing. That's amazing. What else other than RuPaul? Um, let's see. Like I said, I'm pretty simple in my in my in my interest. So um just spending time with my dog, um, eating a bunch of snacks. Um, I like to, I like to play video games. So that's like cool. a, a outlet for me. Um, and you know, really just taking in like what's around me. Um, I like to just walk around the block, see what's out there. Nice. Keep a watch. You're present. I love that. My pre I mean, I'm trying to be good about that. Like I'm not great, but that's like something that's important that does drive, you know, my other influences so. that's fantastic lennox thank you so much for uh spending some time with me and answering some questions <laughs> yeah of course thank you so much this was great this was super fun to talk with you likewise i hope to connect soon again same have a good day that was that how did it go